All right, hey everybody, and welcome back. Uh, thank you guys so much for the continued supports on the past two videos as well. I, it's awesome. We I just got the news, and today is I wait on my channel that we hit 1K officially, and that's just uh, insane. I want to thank you guys again so, for so much for the support, so much for uh, awesome year again so far, and uh, we were able to uh, apply for the YouTube partnership program today so that's awesome i can't wait to hear back and everything and how that's going to start everything like that as well and uh today's video uh we're going to start with uh another thing that i kind of wanted to go over that i think would help out a little bit as far as uh, understanding composition when uh playing as a new player and everything like that as well and that is a boss fleet versus a mob fleet because there's a lot of times that people uh, you're just gonna throw in ships to uh your fleet because they're they're your waifus or they're your they're your meta and everything like that but those ships don't really synergize well with each other or you're having a hard time on a map because you're lacking damage or uh, something's going on with the fleet that it's not getting you to where you need to go and everything like that and always uh the importance of going into the last video as i was explaining which was the mistakes is always having two fleets or more fleets leveled up at a certain amount of time and having a mob fleet for to say and a boss fleet is always something that would be really helpful for right now so probably wondering what is the main difference between both so when a streamer or a content creator refers to a mob fleet or a fleet that is statured and to that type a mob fleet is a fleet that is centered around a group of ships that will clear the nodes on a map for you before hitting the boss that's the little ships that spawn on the map that are the little mini bot like the little mini nodes that give you xp and the resources and stuff that you battle before you hit the boss that group of ships job is to pretty much efficiently and go through and clear those so that way your mob fleet can take out the boss your your boss fleet can take out the boss your boss fleet is going to be the one that's going to be doing the damage your mob is there to clean up the trash nodes is what we call it go through and clear them efficiently and everything like that as well and help you with the map clear and everything like that so you're not wasting all your ammo to hit the boss and then you're right you run out of ammo and then you're you have the no ammo penalty or anything like that as well so what is the key feature of like having a mob fleet or what is like a mob fleet looks like uh depending on how you look at it majority of new players will usually full fleet which is where they have a full frontline vanguard and they have a full frontline main fleet in the back because a lot of chapters are going to be a lot are pretty difficult to only have a couple of ships up front especially if they're not geared or anything to cut the cost of oil down and everything like that as well but the good thing about full fleeting especially is that you can focus on leveling those characters up a lot faster and they're all going to get xp so i wouldn't really worry about oil cost to begin with anyways because your main focus is to level those ships up anyways so your mob fleet is how we look at it is like for example for me uh this one in specifically was the mob fleet i used to farm aggie uh aggie which was I have a CA and then two CLs, and then in the back line I'm running Vestal, uh, so I don't have anybody in my main fleet that can steal MVP uh, or anything like that as well from damage sources because CVs could easily steal, or CVs or CVLs like Shoho or Unicorn or Ryu or Perseus could steal MVP uh, due to the fact of uh, them damaging, over damaging your front line and everything like that as well. So. Uh, the main reason I like the 1 CA to 2 CL loadout, which is 1 heavy cruiser to 2 light cruisers, is the fact that CAs in general, since they are heavy armored, they are very slow. So running a full front line of CAs, unless you have the auxiliary equipment of a beaver badge, is going to be very slow. Your front line is going to sit there, they're not going to move 
they're going to take a lot of damage because they can't dodge or invade shots or anything like that. So if you have no uh, invasion equipment, those CAs are going to suffer if you're running a 3 CA front line. Uh, where the two, oh, you can do two CAs and one CL because they get that little bit of a boost from the CL being slightly faster than them, being a lot faster than them and everything like that as well. But I like to have the ability of the two CLs with the one CA. Uh, so if you look at your slots um, of your Vanguard, the outermost left position, which is what Rune is in, is Rune uses in. Uh, this position right here is pretty much your tank spot. Um, this is the position that's going to soak up the most damage in the, the fleet. Uh, so you typically you will want a tank here. You don't really want to put a CL here. Um, if you put a CL here, you want to make sure they have a, some form of an evasion skill, either like a smoke screen or uh, an evasion buff or have evasion equipment so they can dodge all of the shots that's going to be taken there because that shot, that p spot specifically, is going to be taking the most damage. The one in the middle, the reason why Numberg is here, because she is 113 compared to where the other two are 120. So typically if you have a ship that is lower than your other ones, you want to put them in the middle so they don't really soak up that much damage compared to them in anything like that as well. Your outer right position is more of like your supporter position. Uh, usually I'll use someone that will have like a uh, fleet buff skill or a sl uh, fleet debuff skill, uh, like either for example, Helena's radar scan that has a, a debuff where you control it and it pretty much decreases uh, increases your amount of damage that your Vanguard and your main fleet will do from all sources to that boss for about 10 seconds. Uh, or you have like Columbia that has flagship cover or a smoke screen that from other ships, Jean d'Arc that has the shield. Uh, anything like that that is like a supportive role I kind of put in here. Uh, granted that mine doesn't really have any supportive skills for her fleet but she does have the nice shields and multiple barrages for her so she can kind of just live herself out here and being um, a supportive ship but majority of the reason why vessels out here is because you know you're running your cruisers and everything they're gonna be taking a lot of damage vessel has damage control she's gonna get that burst quality heal on them as well uh, where she will also won't be infecting your MVP for your uh, XP as well down here for your front guard uh, That's pretty much majority of like focusing on mobs So you mainly want to focus ships that would have a good tank here and then whoever else you want to use here either CELs or DDs is fine Usually in the background you'll want to have one type of support either like a Vestal or an Akashi Shoho unicorn anything like that if you want to run damage you could do like uh, Centaur as well for a supportive role. You could do uh, there's there's so many characters. <laughs> it's like the, you can honestly Independence, uh, Ticonderoga, Shangala, uh, you know pretty much uh, your mob fleet's just there to help you get and level up. My mob fleet now pretty much for me is my mob fleet's just there to get XP because of the chapters I've, I've gone through and completed all the chapters waiting for chapter 14 to pretty much drop and everything like that but your mob fleet's to go through get your XP for your ships typically the ones that you want to level up and then uh, your boss fleet for example which this is one of the ones I've been using for a long time just due to the fact that uh, New Jersey's busted so I've been leaving her as my uh, boss fleet battleship your boss fleet uh, typically I can just do a three one formation where I have three in the back and one in the front because Sandy can handle pretty much all the things that I throw at her in her chapters uh, she, high AA I always farm in chapter 12 so there's a lot of planes and stuff like that but boss fleets main purpose is a fleet that is a group of ships that their stats or their skills are based around damage and everything that's going to be focused around killing the Pacific boss and getting you through it. So ships like Sandy, for example, is great for boss because one, she has a barrage that triggers literally 100% of the time every 25 seconds. She has a high AA, high burst damage, high sustain, everything as well. Backline, New Jersey has a lot of firepower, good support of barrages. Uh, really good overall buffs as far as fleets and everything like that. Saratoga has high, high sustained damage. She has burn and flood damage as well. 
Bunker Hill is just over there just to fill the other uh, CV slot. Typically, boss fleets, um, battleships, or CVs rule depending on what is going to be thrown at you in the chapters. Uh, early on, you can run a battleship if you have one with a couple of CVs. You should have Saratoga by... Uh, by then, uh, she's really easy to obtain. You can either get her from Chapter Drop or you can just get her from topping up uh, 99 cents. I'm pretty sure they still do that. Uh, your first time payout and then they'll give you Saratoga and everything for free as well. Saratoga is very good, especially for a new player. Uh, one of the highest damaging CBs in the game as well. And she's very cute. She's very adorable. And she has an extremely good retrofit as well. A battle of ships. So... That's the main difference of like a mob and a boss is that your boss is going to be all damage purely based ships. Anybody that has a lot of damage skills, frontline people who have damage skills, Sandy, who has a barrage, people like Baltimore, or a uh, regular rune for the tanking part of it and everything like that. Baltimore has a lot of damage and sustain, a lot of good buffs as well. You can run like Narashiro as well who has like good torp and good damage as well you could do seattle you could do cheshire you could do pretty much anybody you would realistically want zara you could do drake we all know how busted drake is everything like that as well there's so many options for boss and everything like that but that is the main thing is that you want to look for ships that synergize well and have high damage and everything like that as well I'm also looking into like you know making gear as well, understanding like what gear goes on what and what ship makes everything good and everything like that as well. But uh, this is what's uh, I wanted to make a little short video explaining the differences between like making a mob fleet and making a boss fleet. Hopefully this helped out a little bit, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. But thank you guys again so much for 1K. I uh, gladly appreciate it. And everything i'm just super stoked for more videos in the future uh i will be getting a video about my opinions of the event and everything on the two new characters as well i'll be getting that out later either today or tomorrow uh, when my thumbnail from my editor is finished and everything like that as well uh, we will also be streaming the event on twitch uh here in actually a bit to celebrate my birthday week my birthday is on sunday i'll be turning 24 uh, awesomeness and uh the celebration of hitting 1k thank you guys again so much if you guys comment down below leave a comment subscribe slap that follow button turn on that notification bell and everything that really helped me out and everything and i'm excited for the journey ahead and comment down below what uh you guys think about the event and everything like that as well uh what do you guys like about the channel um what would you guys like to see as far as another video and everything like that i know i ask a lot of the repeat questions and everything but seriously i do like enjoy reading your guys's comments and everything there's a lot of them that actually are very heartwarming and everything like that and i'm glad to see another community growing here as well as well as on twitch so thank you guys again once for everything and I'll see all you guys again in the next video. Until then, have a good one, keep farming, and peace out.